Hey Econ students, this is Jacob Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. You know, actually this doesn't feel right. It's Halloween edition. Give me a second, I'll be right back. Hey Econ students, this is Jacob Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. This year Americans are expected to pay over $7 billion on Halloween candy, costumes, and decorations. That's more than the entire GDP of Somalia. That's not a pirate costume. They're not even trying over there. My family and I take Halloween pretty seriously. In fact, this is my house. For the last five years, I've been running the Clifford Family Spook Alley, and we've had thousands of visitors. Now, scaring kids is pretty fun, but behind the scenes, there's a whole lot of economics on Halloween. The first economic concept you'll see on Halloween is the tragedy of the commons. Now, if you've been trick-or-treating before, you've probably walked up to a house that has a candy bowl and a sign that says, please take one. But most of the time, that bowl's already empty. It's not even dark yet. Where's all the candy? Where'd it go? Well, it's economics. Actually, it's incentives. The tragedy of the commons is the idea that common resources that are available to everyone are often depleted or overused. This is because individuals have an incentive to take as much as they can as fast as they can before someone else does. The theory explains why the candy bowl is usually empty and a lot more of our other pressing issues like overfishing, deforestation, and even climate change. By the way, now that you understand the economics behind what's going on, it doesn't mean that you have the right to take all the candy. I mean, you're still being a jerk. Concept number two, marginal analysis. Now, when do you stop trick-or-treating? At some point, you decide it's time just to go home and you're done, but that decision is actually economics. Marginal analysis is the idea of weighing the additional benefits and the additional costs of any action. Now, I know you might be thinking, there's no cost for trick-or-treating, it's free, but nothing is free. There's an opportunity cost. If you're out running around getting candy, then you can't be resting at home and eating all that candy. So everything has a cost. And every second you're out trick-or-treating, you're thinking about the additional benefits and if they're worth the additional cost. And in the back of your mind, you're doing this all the time, even when the decision isn't about going home. Have you ever walked up to a house that has a super long driveway and been like, nope, nope that's marginal analysis. Number three, the laugher curve. I don't know about you, but in my family, there's a mommy and daddy tax. When the kids get home, we kindly request a mandatory donation. I usually take a few Almond Joys since none of my kids really like them, but what would happen if I took more than just a few candies? Well, let's find out. We're gonna do something new this year. This year, Daddy's gonna take half of your candy. What do you think about that idea? No. I'm gonna take 90% of your candy. So instead of just taking one or two pieces this year, I'm gonna take nine out of 10. What do you think? No. You sure? I, I think it's fair. I'll, I take nine and you get only one. No. Uh, every 10. No? Why not? Because I worked hard for that candy. So if I took 90%, what would you do? I would stay home and not trick or treat at all. The Laffer Curve suggests that increasing tax rates could decrease tax revenue since income earners have less incentive to work. After all, if daddy takes 90% of your candy, why should you go trick or treating at all? Now in real life, the idea is super controversial, but the fact remains that at some super high tax rate, workers have less incentive to work. Now how much should the tax rate be, and should taxes go up or down, I don't know. I'm just going to stick with my almond joys. Concept number four, the marginal propensity to consume. After Halloween, there's only two things you can do with your candy, consume it or save it. And when I was a kid, my best friend would save almost all his candy for months, and mine was gone in like three days. Marginal propensity to consume is a macroeconomics concept that measures how much people spend of new income. If you like equations, it's the change in spending divided by the change in income. And if you're an econ geek like me, you can actually calculate your MPC for let's say a week after Halloween. If your number is close to one, then you're consuming things really quickly. And if it's zero, then you're saving everything and you have a problem, like you need to go eat your candy. Seriously, stop saving all your candy, it's weird. Now for economists, actually figuring out how much people spend or save is super important when it comes to cutting taxes or increasing government spending to stimulate the economy. Number five and the most important economic concept on Halloween, trade. My favorite part of Halloween when I was a kid was when my brother and I sat on the living room floor, dumped out all our candy and started trading for the stuff that we really wanted. This was just pure economics. You're learning and using negotiation skills, you're weighing demand and supply, you're using consumer choice theory when you realize that maybe you don't want that 10th mini Snickers. And of course, there's exchange rates. What is one full size Twix worth? Three Butterfingers, two Kit Kats, or maybe 5,000 candy corns? I don't know, but trick or treating was way better when you had the opportunity to trade. Hey, that's it for now. Remember, economics is everywhere. Have a fun and safe Halloween, and if you're in the San Diego area, come stop by my house, okay? Till next time. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Remember, I have a bunch of stuff coming this semester, so please subscribe. Also, take a look at my econ series that I do about videos called Econ Movies. And if you're an econ course, take a look at my ultimate review packet. Thanks again for watching. Until next time. Okay, bonus round. So my family, we just got a new kitten. I have not met her yet. Uh, we're going to go find out what she's like. I think we're going to name her uh, Tim Bits. Uh, it's a Canadian name, but trust me, it makes sense. Uh, by the way, this spook alley got all the colors and the crazy things happening. 
I'm not sure if you can see this stuff yet. What? Uh, this is my whole house. It's all getting set up behind the scenes. All right, where's this cat? Ah, oh, the cat, the cat, the cat. Here's uh, some stuff for the spook alley. Take a look. Bonus feature, bonus feature. Yeah. Hey, there's Jamers. All right, so let's take a look at this cat. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Look at this cat. Oh, hi, cutie. What do you think, Jess? Yeah, you gotta be like careful. Yeah. Isn't that really so cute? It's actually really small. Maple, Maple was like scared, like getting scared. Yeah. Like, yeah, Maple's actually. Like, yeah. like, Maple's the dog, by the way, if you're wondering, she folks. She's my wife. So she pit her cloth on mom's shoulder? Oh no, really? Yeah. Good. We gotta get those things taken care of. Oh, look how cute she is. Hey, kitty. I want the Oh yeah, kill those gophers. Conan, what is best in life? To crush your enemies, to see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of the women.